Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Project Sullivan. I'm Gogo. And I'm Gilbert. Today we have a special episode. It's going to all be about Uncle Scott. Scotch, for those of you who might know him. Enjoy this episode. I love filming this one. How much do you mind being called Uncle Scotch? It doesn't bother me. I don't use scotch tape on nothing, so I don't know how I got that name. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't bother me. As long as you don't call me late to dinner. So what kind of things must you do to get prepared for a race? We do a lot of work in the garage to prepare us. They say you win races in the garage, not on the track. Because if you that way you can make sure your your uh, your race vehicle up to spec before you get out there. Got to get all of our tires properly inflated, get them loaded up in the truck. Um, so spare tires for sure. Spare tires, um, rivet guns, extra parts, a couple extra shocks. You never know what's going to happen out there. Something easy to fix, you, you, you at least got the tools to fix it. And we travel an hour and a half one way, so we try to take extra of everything that we can. I haven't bought a new rim in 14 years. That's poor boy racing. We do what we can with what we got. On last week's episode of Project Soul, recap, a uh, uh, time lapse, a uh, uh, stop motion. Well, what are we doing our video on the road? We are building the go kart. Which go kart? The red go kart. To be more specific, it's a Razor 350 watt. Well, we completely restored this go kart, and we plan to give it to our nephew JT. Well, my nephew is cousin. As we are now at Rose Sand last week. The cleaning. We put a lot of cleaning in this video. Until we realized it was power cleaning. Uh, the mighty Harbor Freight Welder. Gilbert tore down an electric engine and explained to Gogo how it works. Greatest buy ever. We grinded the welds. We welded some more. We grinded some more. We welded some more. We grinded some more. And the go-karts back together. Ta-da! All in a whole 15 minutes. Right? It only took us 15 minutes to build it. You thought it was going to take right? three weeks. No. So here we are in beautiful Elephant Butte, New Mexico for Project Sullivan. I was thinking about the same thing on the drive over here. And it's See, here we got... Neil Sullivan here driving the standard Aviat truck in this beautiful parade as you can see and our view is fantastic <laughs> right behind the septic system pumping guys you might be wondering what we're doing in a parade and uh, behind us is Uncle Scotty's uh on a camera, on a cell phone. Yeah, showing up with Scotty's super truck. So five top reasons why you don't want to use a standard while driving a float in a parade. Go. <laughs> Another bad reason for this parade. I got a lovely view of the porter potty. What would we do? We just cut that part out of the video if someone ran up and tried to use one of those porta potties right away. <laughs> Honestly, I was thinking, I was like, I'm not sure you want candy from the septic guy. <laughs> What are your thoughts on Vado Speedway in comparison to other tracks or whatever? So I've raced five different tracks. I like Vado Speedway. How long have you been racing? I got my first car 14 years ago. About 14 years, 13, 14 years. We don't race week in and week out. We do it as for pleasure and for fun, not, not for competition, for points. 
But you have raised for points in the past. I have. I ran IMCA points whenever I was living in Eunice, New Mexico, and Hobbs, New Mexico. And uh, we were doing real well until we uh, lost our power plant. We actually first in state points for half the season in New Mexico. First in, state, first in points in Carlsbad tra uh, track. And we were second or third in points at the time in the Cardinal Motor Speedway. And then we had some unfortunate luck. But that's what we get for uh, running uh, used parts. I bought my pistons that year with a 30 pack of beer. Trying to understand where you where you were at last on the track to see where your vehicle's gonna run or handle best at. You try not to pay attention to the other cars, but uh, just hitting your marks. And you're worried about spinning out, especially when you get dry slick. And now Duffy with trouble in turn number four. And feathering the throttle this way. Everybody's different. Though. Everybody thinks different. When it comes again. Me, I, as long as I load my car up, I don't care. How much racing is like Mario Kart? Shh, it's been 20 years since I've played Mario Kart. It's a lot different though. It, there's never one turn the same as the next. The track is never the same from one lap to the next. Everything changes. I wouldn't call it even close to Mario Kart. Now that you're racing super trucks, which do you prefer, super trucks or stock cars? They both handle pretty close to the same so far that I've noticed, so I wouldn't be able to be on, have an honest answer until I run more in the super truck. I've had my car, my stock car for uh, 11 years now, so that one, we got it dialed in pretty good, but the super truck is uh, a lot different. Because of the coil suspension? Is coil suspension over a leaf spring, but the, the weight of the car is a lot different. The cockpit, the truck is more comfortable to drive. I fit better in the cockpit versus my Nova. What would you say since you're apart from other racers? I call myself a poor boy racer. Other people say poor boy racer, but they still got brand new. A lot of everything is brand new on their stuff. I can't say of anything brand new on my stuff. Bought a set of rods and pistons from a guy in units for a 30 pack of beer. They're just sitting in his garage and I said, hey, I can use those. And he told me, give him a 30 pack of beer and I can have them. We ran half a season, top first in points. I wasn't planning on losing a rod, but it, it is what it is. <laughs> but what do I expect with what I paid? Do you remember what it was like when you first got behind a wheel? I know it was 14 years ago. Do you remember what it was like? I was in a big old boat. It was hard at first, but as I kept looking, I eventually found better and better parts. Whenever I met one of my buddies now of uh, 15, 16 years, he got me into a car. He found me a car for 300 bucks, as a matter of fact, and I brought it home. I borrowed a trailer to go get it. I didn't have a trailer, nothing. You didn't bring it home. You brought it to my house. It was just parked in the backyard. Me and Uncle Scotty started working on that, it. It that, didn't even have that, an engine or a transmission. There wasn't even a full cage in it. <laughs> <laughs> that one I traded back off to Orny's dad. And it was still 20,000 pounds. <laughs> but then I went and picked up the Laguna that Orly had stashed away at one of his buddy's houses. And that one was complete, most of the motor transmission. And that thing was a tank. So finding the, the parts to put it together just to get it out there. I was real, not scared, but it just wasn't something that I ever grew up with. I, we jumped into it. I want to do this, and I did it. I have a buddy that helped me out, found me a car, and he, he races sometimes too. Um, but getting on the track, it was, it was a little different at first for probably the first year or two. And then as, as the time pro progressed, we, like I said, we poor boy raced, so I picked up another car on payments, $600. And I made $100 payments every month. And uh, it's the same car that I have now, that Nova. We re rebuilt it 10 times, put two frames under it. I mean, I've, I've had my fair share of wrecks, that's for sure. But it still runs good. Green, yellow, white, and checkered. Well, green is go. Yellow is caution. 
red means stop, that there's a, a red or a um, checkered is whenever I, I get around to getting to it. It's the last flag of the, of the race. And white? White means there's one lap left. Why do you sometimes see a race car speed up during the yellow flag? Sometimes they're trying to catch up to the rest of the field. They got tied up in the rack or the spin out or whatever, so they'll speed up to catch up to the field. Typically is what they do. We wear a one-way radio in our ears that the announcer box can talk to us and tell us where we go in position or to slow down or to stop. There's a red flag. That's probably one of the biggest safeties that I, that I like. Because I mean, you can't see in those trucks or cars, or you don't have mirrors. You don't. You don't have nothing. Well, because that would just add more danger anyway, right? Right. Bunch of glass everywhere. Jacob Dart, your race leader down the back straight away in the 39D. It'll be his race to start anywhere inside that S and J and the start zone right about there. Nissan of Las Cruces green flag, back in the air with four to go. Four to go. During the heat race, we had some car problems. Would you like to explain what happened with the car? We had some carburetor issues. We personally never ran a four barrel before. This year is the first time we were running a four barrel. We had some uh, needle and seat problems on the two front barrels, which uh, didn't allow my car to stay at the proper speed or properly operating. So it bogged down, almost die out, and then it'd take off and run good, and then it would bog down. Thankfully, we we didn't fall too far back, and we had a caution come out. And then it ran good for a couple laps, and then it did it again. In between the heat and the main event, we were able to go to the little store there in the pits, and they had a needle and seat. We purchased one, put a new one in there, and we were excited to go back out there for the main event. So you fixed that in the pits. How much do you actually get to fix in the pits? Like, it's not much time, is there? It just depends. So that night, we were the last cars out in the main event. And there's five other uh, five other classes in front of us, and the class that was right in front of us, the mo the B mods, they had a bunch of cautions and a lot of wrecks. So it took a while to get back out there in between the main the heat and the main. There's probably a good hour in between. We were able to fix that problem. Starting lineup for tonight's John Sen Supply Super Truck Main Events, Jacob Dart out of Deming, New Mexico with a 39D and Dr. Dave Dietz to the outside of the Las Cruces in 01. Row 2 inside will be Jim Wallace out of Las Cruces in the L750 and Art Viramontes also out of Las Cruces in 41. Row 3 inside will be Dawson Manike out of Las Cruces in the 14 and Cliff Everidge also out of Las Cruces in 11. Starting 7th will be Rusty Bowen out of Las Cruces in the 98 and Sherman Barnett out of El Paso in 82. Starting ninth will be Stephanie Smith out of Las Cruces in the 87S and Esteban Reyes out of Las Cruces in 64. Starting 11th will be Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, Scott Sullivan in the 20. And Luis Esquivel will start to his outside out of El Paso in 7. Christy Barnett will start 13th out of El Paso in the 44. 
Devin Smith out of Las Cruces will start 14th in the 004. And your final row will be Lloyd Duffy out of Las Cruces in the 10. And Fito Gallardo scheduled to go last out of Las Cruces in the 777. Do you have any tips for new racers? If you're trying to poor boy it, don't race on a credit card. Cause you'll get into debt and you'll never get out. It's an adrenaline rush and you get stuck and you want to go faster, you want to do this. And if you can't afford the parts brand new out of pocket, it might not be a good idea to be buying them. John Stone Supply Super Trucks, 20 lap feature, the final event of the night. Jacob Dart and Dave Dietz lead us down to the green this time by as we get set to go for the final feature race of the evening. Dart and Dietz on row number one. John Stone Supply Super Trucks comes to the neat sound of Las Cruces green flag. We are underway. leaking gear oil already from the heat race and we leaked out all of our gear oil in our pit before we went to go race in the main event what made you want to get into super trucks <clears throat> i've been wanting to get into the class for five six years if not even longer knowing that the class never changes rules they're all good people to, to race with they have a good a decent car count usually anywhere from 15 to 20 trucks and the truck class has gotten bigger but what made me really decide was in 2020 my daughter passed away and the super truck class came and donated $500 to her uh, funeral and me not being a part of that class showed me what kind of class they really had and I told myself I want to be a part of that in the future so then it just so happened we found a truck. I had to travel five hours to go get it. 
for a for a price that I could afford. And now uh, now I'm part of it, and I wouldn't change it at all. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Project Sullivan. I hope you really enjoyed this episode. It took a lot of time and a lot of effort to put together. And if you guys have been watching it this far, you might as well like, comment, and subscribe. Help us rise to 1K. See you next week. Here on Project Sullivan. Help us get to our 1K. Where's our net? Oh yeah, rise to 1K. Oh, wrong side. Okay, try to get.